This is it, the most famous piece of Italian Renaissance. The Uffizi Gallery in Florence may seem overwhelming, but we're gonna break down the how-tos for this must visit here in Italy, when to visit, how to buy tickets, what to see once you're inside, and how long it'll take. I think the first time I visited the Uffizi was on my first trip to Italy. Then I returned again with this French art student I was dating at the time. <laughs> Last night, I spent hours at my computer doing all the research, how to buy tickets, how to get in, and what to see, so you don't have to spend your time doing so. It may seem daunting and confusing when you're walking around here, you see all the long lines and people with confused looks on their face, but we're gonna demystify the Uffizi Gallery. You must buy your tickets online. Sure, you can go stand in line on weekdays and buy them on the spot, but you're gonna be wasting a lot of your time. So go to B Ticket. I'll put the link down below. Go on there, buy your tickets online in advance. You pay a four euro fee when you do that in addition to the 26 euro you pay for the ticket, but you're gonna be saving tons of time that you can spend eating pasta and drinking wine. Okay got my official ticket to enter the Uffizi. Now we're ready. So when is the best time to visit this art gallery? Well, I would suggest early in the morning when it opens. It opens up at 8.15 and closes at 6.30. Open every day of the week except Mondays and holidays. If you can, come in the hour before closing, so say around 5.30 p.m. I've done neither of those today. I'm here at noon. Now sometimes you can get a 12 euro ticket. Those are in some winter months. They offer those discounts, so be on the lookout for that. And again, check the B Ticket website online. With your ticket in hand, head to the gallery. It's easy to find between Ponte Vecchio and Palazzo Vecchio. Old bridge and the old palace. Italy loves this old stuff. You'll see this big outdoor courtyard here lined with statues, and then you'll know you're at the Uffizi. Now, with the ticket, the benefit of having the ticket and buying it online, you can head right to the fast lane entrance. You want to know how much you should ration from your pasta and wine drinking tour of Italy for the Uffizi Museum? Well, stick with me until the end of the video. I'll give you those details. To get an idea of what we're facing, the Uffizi Gallery is one of the most important museums in the world and definitely the most important gallery here in Italy. It's known for its priceless works and especially those from the Italian Renaissance. It's crazy to think this massive building was built for the Medici family in the 1500s by Giorgio Vasari simply as a space for their offices, Uffizi, and they had an art gallery up on the top in the attic. Well, it grew and it was a place for them to show off their artwork for themselves and their friends and their family. And it wasn't open to us low life public until 1769. Now we can get in here to see all the masterpieces, Michelangelo, Raffaello, Da Vinci, Lippi, Botticelli. It's a lot to take in, let's go. What to see? Well, this place is overwhelming, massive. 101 rooms, 13,000 square meters. You really need to plot and plan your mission to make it a success. I'm gonna show you the key pieces to see on our express tour. This is it, the most famous piece of Italian Renaissance by Sandro Botticelli. Venus, the birth of Venus, the goddess of love being blown to shore by the goddess of the west wind, and on the other side, the goddess of spring waiting to clothe the newborn baby. Yes, the baby's a full-grown woman, but never mind that, this is Roman mythology. Now you can easily spend 30 minutes here just getting lost in the details of Sandro Botticelli, the love, the goddess of love, all the little intricate parts, the flowers, the water, the shell that holds up Venus. It's quite impressive for a painting from the 1400s. This is a bonus Botticelli. This is La Primavera, or the spring. And some would say this is the greatest painting, the best painting ever produced. A piece of art similar to like the Beatles White Album or Radiohead's OK Computer, an artist at their best. And that's what we're looking at here. Now we get the birth of Venus, that was simpler. This mixes in pagan symbols and 
dark bits, which is really controversial stuff back in the 1400s. Botticelli already did the controversy with the birth of Venus, the nude Venus there. Now he's mixing pagan symbols and really it comes alive. This piece has inspired so many other painters over the centuries and you can see why with the details from the feet up to the top of all the figures here in this piece. You have Venus in the middle, you have Cupid above, the fruit and trees above, the flowers down below their bare feet, Zephyrus in the trees to the right, the cold wind, a dark symbol for this spring. Together with the birth of Venus, they are the most famous paintings in the world and icons of the Italian Renaissance. Now both of those are in the Botticelli rooms, A12 and A11. This place is massive and beautiful. Even the hallways are stunning. This is the Annunciation by Leonardo da Vinci. One of my favorites and one of the must-sees here in the Uffizi. We can see in the painting Archangel Gabriel announcing to Mary, a virgin, that she's gonna give birth to baby Jesus. Now Da Vinci did this work at a very young age, but his style is so recognizable in the painting. And you can see it in Gabriel's face, which bears a resemblance to the Mona Lisa. Ready for some Raffaello? Well, this is one of his paintings that he painted at an early age during his stay here in Florence. This is Madonna del Cardellino, or Madonna of the Goldfinch. It's Madonna with the songbird, and you see John the Baptist with the songbird holding it out to Christ, a symbol of passion as Christ touches it. Now what's significant in this is that you can see Raffaele borrowing heavily from Michelangelo and the older Da Vinci, and Da Vinci in the pyramid style of the figures in the painting, and Michelangelo and some of the facial features of the three figures there in the painting. To think Raffaele did this when he was around 20 years old. Doni Tondi, this is by Michelangelo. Now we all know Michelangelo by his sculptures. He didn't care too much for painting. He preferred working with marble, but he did do a few works like this one here. The most famous of his paintings, of course, is the Sistine Chapel at the Vatican in Rome but we have stuff like this. And now we're in the golden era of Italian Renaissance, the big hitters like Raffaele, Da Vinci, and Big Mick. This is one of the must-sees during your trip to Florence. And also, this is the only painting by Michelangelo that you can see in Florence and one of his earliest as well. Now we're passing so many paintings on this whirlwind trip of the Uffizi Gallery, but that's the purpose of this. I wanna point out to you the must-see paintings that you should see when you're here in the Uffizi. There are many more to see, and you've seen that I've been passing those as well. You can spend so much more time in here if you have it, but this is the express tour. We've been spending our time up on the second floor, and we're now making our way down to the first floor and to one of my favorite paintings in all of the Uffizi. Getting close, it's somewhere in here. I can tell because it's dark. The thing I like about this first floor, it's much more quiet. A lot less people make their way down here to this gallery. Obviously upstairs are all the big hitters, all the Italian Renaissance guys. But down here you're gonna find some gems and I think it's just up this way. This is it right here, the head of Medusa by Caravaggio. It's small but wonderful. Oil painting on canvas put on this wooden shield. And while that's Medusa, she has hair of poisonous snakes. And as a gorgon, she can turn people into stone just by looking at them. But this is where Perseus comes into play. He was able to decapitate her, and this painting is the moment she realizes her head is no longer part of her body. Pretty dark shit. By the way, there 
is a newsletter now with all sorts of travel tips and hacks. You can sign up to get on that email newsletter downstairs in the description below. Now the Uffizi Gallery puts out several itineraries that you could follow. The short, the complete, and the classic, and the longest one takes up to around three hours. You can download the PDF map of the gallery and I'll put a link to it down below so you can find it. What I've done here is I've taken you to the essentials, the big hitters, Raffaele, we gotta get out of here, Botticelli, and of course, Big Mick. We saw the important pieces today and what I put together as an express tour that should take you around one hour. If you have more time, I suggest you spend more time in there and see the others like Giotto, Lippi, and many others. And especially if it's a hot summer's day or a cold winter's day here in Florence, you can escape the cold, escape the heat, and spend a lot of hours in the gallery. And you don't have to do a lot of walking. You can sit down on the benches and just admire the artwork from the Italian Renaissance. I put together an Italy, an essential Italy travel guide as an e-guide PDF that you can download, have in your pocket when you're traveling around this country. There's also a dining guide as well. Both of those are linked downstairs, down below. And if you want to know about the do's and don'ts for visiting Florence, what you should see, what you shouldn't see when you're here, well check out this video next. Mm -hmm.